After a successful Stamford Bridge outing against Newcastle United at the weekend, the Blues travel up north for the EFL Cup to take on Newcastle again. Let's see if we can go two for two against the Toon, but who will start and how can we best our opponents in this match? Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the lead-in. Let's go. No need to set the scene too much in this one, this is going to be a shorter episode due to the proximity to the last fixture, so let's just briefly update on where the two teams stand, then get into some lineups. Let's briefly touch on our opponents first, after last weekend's match Newcastle are languishing in 12th place in the league, winless in 5 games and for all intents and purposes are void of any and all confidence they might have had for this fixture. Despite winning in the last two rounds of the cup, once against Bournemouth and then against AFC Wimbledon, they have the cards stacked against them in this game with them having to rotate players whilst played with injuries. So with that being said, let's take a look at a possible Newcastle starting 11, starting with those absentees. The Magpies have one extra injury than they started with last match as Anthony Gordon suffered an injury in training, he'll be assessed before kickoff but likely won't feature. That means he joins Callum Wilson, Sven Botman, Kieran Trippier, Jamal Lascelles, Garen Kual, Matt Target and Martin Dubravka in the medical room. I'll be putting Eddie Howe's side into the same 4-3-3 formation that they used in the last round and against us. First up in goal is going to be Odysseus Vlachodimos. As it's a cup game, I expect a lot of rotation, and the Greek international is stepping in as second choice as Dubravka is injured. The defence is going to be similar to what they fielded against Wimbledon, as they don't really have many options. Starting with the right back, it's going to be double duty for Tino Livramento. The centre back partnership sounds like a very odd one, as natural right back Emil Krath starts alongside Fabian Scher in the right and left centre back spots, respectively. However, this will likely change in game, which I'll talk about later. Finally, over on the left hand side will be Lloyd Kelly, so no Lewis Hall who had a great game against us last time out. Moving into the midfield, we'll start on the right. One of the three that started against us last time will likely start again here, and I reckon it will be Sandro Tonali who was substituted in the second half and thus will have more energy for this game. The other two centre mids will be a combination of Sean Longstaff who came off of the bench on Sunday and Joe Willock who both started in the last round. That leaves just the three attackers left, and like the midfield, I think one of the three will retain their place. With Gordon injured, they really don't have many options, so on the right, I'm going to go with Jacob Murphy, who was benched last game. On the left, I'll be putting Alexander Isak, who netted last time out. And finally, up top, I'll be giving the start to youngster William Asula, who looked decent in the last round. That's just a brief look at what the team could look like. Again, with the short time between matches, this could be rotated more than this. We'll have to wait and see. Now let's turn our attention to Chelsea and see what our lineup for this game could be. The only absentee we have is Ben Chilwell, who is out due to illness, but if we're being honest, he wasn't going to play anyway, so no harm done there. With that being said, I'll be putting Enzo Maresca's Chelsea team in the 4-3-3 formation once again, with a large amount of changes to the starting eleven. Starting with the goalkeeper, I'm going to be putting in Philip Jurgensen. He usually comes in for the cup games, and I'm hoping he'll retain his place after Sanchez's dodgy performance against the Toon last time out. For the back four, it's going to be switching completely from the weekend's game. Starting on the right, it's going to be another right-back stint for Axel Di Sassi. The centre-back duo will be a combination of Tosin Adarabioyo and Benoit Badiashil in the right and left centre-back spots, as is normally the case in these fixtures. And finally, on the left will be Mark Kukurea, who was on the bench for the last game and will surely come back in for this one. Moving into the midfield, this is a little contentious with so many stars here. I think the obvious choice for the holding role is Renato Vega, who didn't feature at all in the Premier League fixture. Ahead of him in the more advanced roles will be a combination of Enzo Fernandez, who was on the bench on Sunday, and Joao Felix, who usually plays in these rotated games. Ahead of them in the attacking roles, let's start on the right. It's a toss up here between the two wingers as both could start on either side, but I'm going to put Jaden Sancho here as I think he's a little better off the right than his opposite winger. That winger of course will be Misha Mudrik, who's been a massive thorn in Newcastle's side in previous games, who'll start off of the left. Finally, up top will of course be Christopher Nkunku, who has a bit of a chip on his shoulder after he was at the mercy of the referees on Sunday, and will be looking to impress here instead. Apart from that, I think this is a solid team and perfectly capable of beating Newcastle if we play well, and we'll talk about how in a little bit. But before we do, it's time for today's comment question of the day, so answer me this. Which wingers would you pick for this game, and why? Let me know in the comments down below with QOTD at the start as always, and I'll heart my favourite answers. 
Now let's take a look at how Chelsea can navigate this game tactically and see how we can beat the Magpies in this game. But before that, I just wanted to ask you guys to follow me on my other socials, the main one being my Twitter or X. Over 18,000 of you subscribed to me on this channel, but only 400 of you follow me over there. If everyone that's watching this video could follow me over there, we could easily hit over a thousand on that account, I believe. I live tweet every single Chelsea game and I'm also allowed to be a bit more unfiltered over there, so you're missing out. Also, if you like short content, I do have a TikTok too. I've been recently posting some teasers on my youtube shorts but the full videos are will be on my tiktok and that's where i'll be kind of doing more fun less analytical and a bit more jokey things and or rants so for that type of content you can go see me over there i appreciate you guys as always and hope to see you guys over on those other platforms too now let's get back to the video all right so here we have the team and as always let's move the players into the positions that they'll actually play in game because we don't ever stay in this 4-3-3 now whenever kukurea is in the lineup it's very much expected that he will be the fullback out of the two to invert and as we have disassi on this right hand side who is more naturally a center back he will obviously not be the one going into the midfield so we see kukurea come into this um this holding role or this um kind of advanced position where he can operate in this this half space and we get Badia Shield going out to the left Tosin playing as this central centre back and then Disassi playing as the right centre back which he can do very comfortably now we get to see kind of two options here in the midfield because obviously we have been seeing a mixture of us operating in a box with two um, holding midfielders and two forward midfielders like this and we get the box and we've also been seeing um, the other thing where we get one holding role um, player and then we get the two eights with Kukurea and, and Enzo and then this 10 player that kind of plays here and this will usually be Felix if he's uh, playing now and that creates this diamond that we kind of see. Now, this game can kind of go two ways, in my opinion. We can either see Vega playing on this left-hand side and this left um, holding role with Enzo dropping a bit deeper from this uh, advanced right position. And we could see Kukurea play in uh, this kind of upper 10 role that we kind of see Gusto playing in when he uh, comes onto this side, or if he's on the right-hand side, he usually does it on the right instead. And then obviously Felix can kind of uh, operate in the Cole Palmer role on this on this right hand side um, that's one option and we may see that for periods of the game especially if Newcastle are putting a lot of pressure on us and we need to play out from the back because obviously Enzo is a very very good deep line playmaker and so it's Vega he can operate that way and those two can kind of help us get out if we need the extra body in midfield here from playing out from the back but for the most part what I kind of expect us to see is so that 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 kind of initial diamond that we kind of spoke about where kukurea has the license to be able to get forward um and that's one of the things that he can do really really well and obviously felix can play in this this 10 role but what we probably will see for the majority of this game is something that we've been seeing very a lot recently and that's that he will kind of join and kunku and they'll both play in this kind of double false nine area where one will be playing here one will be playing here and it's almost like a three three four with the um the two forwards as it were here and it's more actually of like a 4-2-2-2 a 4 triple 2 with obviously mudrick and sancho would kind of be a little bit deeper we kind of saw that in the um in the game against panathinaikos and we actually it kind of shows how we've adapted our system over time because we actually kind of saw this in the previous game against newcastle with jackson and palmer doing the same thing where they were both really really high and both kind of dropping into this little pocket and we'll talk about that little pocket a little bit more once we get further into this but as we have kind of already spoken about newcastle in the previous video i'm going to be a little more brief here and focus on the previous fixture what went well what didn't go well and how this fixture could be different now obviously if you want to get a little bit more insight on how newcastle play and stuff like that the video that i put out last week where i kind of covered that will be linked in the description as always and will be on screen here in one of the i cards in the top right so if we bring the newcastle team in here and they obviously played this kind of 4-3-3 in in the latter game we can kind of talk about what went really well in that last game and what didn't go well firstly i think the the main thing we kind of wanted to we saw in this game was that the midfield battle and we kind of will we'll match them up here a little bit more midfield battle was clearly won by Chelsea 
Caicedo and Lavia absolutely dominated the midfield for the majority of the game, uh, not only just with the counter pressing and getting high up the pitch and putting pressure on Newcastle when they had the ball, but also being able to withstand the press that, that Newcastle were putting on us and kind of helping us navigate that and get forward when they committed bodies forward. Because obviously they play this um, this kind of reserved midfield with Tonali in it. Obviously, they, I said the season before, they didn't really do that. And obviously now Tonali is back from his suspension. They kind of forcing all three into this midfield lineup. And it's kind of a bit more defensive, a little bit more um, passive, in, even though the two two players will get up and press it kind of it they don't really have that that one player who's going to be able to get away from pressure and play a pass forward or do a little bit of trickery and break the lines that type of thing they never really had that and they struggled a lot in this game to kind of break the lines of us when we had uh lavia and caicedo going the other way and obviously and obviously one of our goals actually comes from lavia pushing really high up in the center winning the ball back and then playing it forward and as i said i think the the main thing that we did really really well in that game was navigating the press incredibly well at times not just from um when we had it in midfield and they would push up really really high and try and match because we we always see that we have obviously we have this spare man um in midfield at all times because we have the four rather than the three like they have and not only the four but we also had the kind of five at times because jackson would drop in as is this false nine that he kind of um he kind of does quite a lot and obviously also palmer um in this in this kind of middle role was kind of roaming around and trying to find the pockets of space so when a player like for example joel linton would go to press uh, lavia or caicedo on the ball and they know that the ball's going to go this way so they press this player but now Palmer is completely free and what we kind of kept seeing is the ball getting fed into a Caicedo or a Lavia he would be able to navigate this pressing player get it through to Palmer in this space and then Palmer could drive forward and try and get the goals that way and this leads on to what I was mentioning earlier and it's that that little bit of pocket uh, between the midfield line the midfield three and the back line was getting exposed over and over again by Chelsea, whether that be, as I said, Palmer dropping into this space and kind of being able to pick up the ball or um, Jackson dropping deep and kind of dragging a player out of position. We kept seeing this, this movement happen and whenever we got the ball here, it was just a matter of if the player would get pressed, like we kind of saw happen with, uh, with, with Palmer, he would get pressed by a player, whether that be one of the center backs or the holding midfielder. And he would just spin in behind, completely leave the player for dead, and then play the ball up the pitch. And obviously, once we've broken that initial midfield line, we get this 4v4 happening. And obviously, with a smart smart run from Jackson or a smart run from Pedro Neto, who was on this left-hand side, who would go on the outside that we kind of saw, um, you could obviously take the ball and then beat his man and put the ball in the box, which is what we saw for Jackson to get his goal. When we have... Um, this scenario and we I've spoken about this on numerous occasions but when we have the scenario where we get to make 1v1s all over the pitch in the attacking areas with for example um, with players like Noni Madueke on this right hand side or Neto on the left hand side or Jackson against this centre back or even Palmer against this centre back when we have these opportunities to create these 1v1s then it's just down to individual quality and we back ourselves to have more individual quality in these positions than the defenders that are in front of us and obviously Newcastle were very very harmed by injuries and have been for quite a long time in this in this season so they didn't have the, their strongest back line out um, and we definitely took advantage of that and kind of allowed our star players to kind of shine by creating these opportunities that's all well and good talking about that and what went well but there were things that didn't go well for us in this game too and I think we can kind of talk about those because they could come up again in this in this second fixture. Um, I think the first thing that we kind of want to talk about is the way that Newcastle pressed really, really high when we had the ball in these um, in these uh, very, very deep positions, and it forced us to go long. They were mar man marking every single player and not allowing us to. Um, even though we had like the spare man here in midfield for example they were pushing up high to stop all of the deep positions from being unmarked so it would force sanchez to go long and obviously 50 percent of sanchez's balls were complete misses or didn't get contested or just went wayward right and this was something that i spoke about in the preview i said that they would probably try and force us to go long because they know that they can win the aerial battles against a lot of our players they didn't really even need to do that because they were putting so much pressure on on on, on sanchez that he kind of just was just lining the ball aimlessly without kind of the intent of actually finding someone and for the majority of the game this didn't really work that's something they'll obviously try and do again 
But the one thing which I did really want to touch on and something that could be a concern for this game as well, because obviously we're going to be playing Mudrick and Sancho who aren't our first choice wingers. They really, really stifled what I would like to refer to as our on the ball wing play. Now, when it was a situation where we could get uh, the wingers off the ball and obviously we saw this with Neto getting his um, getting his uh, <laughs> assist by, by by running in behind and when he could be off the ball and run into getting receiving the pass that's fine but when we were actually on the ball with our wingers out in these wide areas we really struggled to kind of make inroads against the fullbacks especially on this left hand side where they had lewis hall um Noni Madueke really, really struggled to get past him, and it kind of limited what we were able to do in that regard. And obviously, we were kind of lucky that we had Palmer and Neto being so good on the opposite side that this didn't really matter. And obviously, Tino Livramento is a, a fullback that will like to get forward, and he didn't really get to do that as much because he was doing so much defensive work. And in in most cases, he was actually stifling Neto, or those two were kind of 50 50 against each other. But obviously, it was just that one moment of Neto being able to get in behind and then get the pass across that kind of allowed us to get a goal. And the third and final thing I kind of wanted to mention is just the defensive lapses that we had at times in this game where we would switch off or not track runs or kind of the, the information wasn't being passed between our back line. Obviously, we see their goal. We get Isak getting a goal because James kind of loses his man and doesn't tell um, the opposite player, like, hey, go get this, <laughs> pick this guy up type of thing. And obviously, right at the end of the game, we were really under the cosh. It took us some absolutely heroic defending to stop us from conceding. We obviously saw that horrific uh, chance that Isak somehow did not score when um, Sanchez gives the ball away and they get it up on this right-hand side and he around the goalkeeper and can't put it in the net and obviously Caicedo gets back and things like that if we keep doing that in this game with this much less experienced back line and with a goalkeeper that probably doesn't have the most confidence considering he's found it very hard to get clean sheets in recent times because of the defense in front of him not being so good and obviously this is a very rotated side if Newcastle decide to play a very strong attack here, um, and I've I've backed them to play Isak on this left-hand side, obviously I assume they'll play three up top, but um, they could actually go with the two strikers as well. That's definitely an option. Um, but I think they're going to be playing as strong of a front line that they probably could do with, uh, with those rotations. And if they take it really seriously and our defenders are still making those defensive laps, they can definitely punish us with this rotated side. Now let's touch on how this game will be different and why I think it will be different. The first and most obvious thing is that the personnel is different, right? So we don't have the same teams. They don't have their first choice midfield, or I don't think they would do. We basically have an entirely rotated side. Obviously, we do have some first teamers in here, like Enzo, like Kukurea. Obviously, Nkunku and Felix are, uh, could be in our first team, and they're just unlucky not to be um, because the players that they're competing against are so good. That type of thing. We've got very, very good players in this rotated side, but that's one thing that we kind of see is that because we have this different personnel we have to play a little bit differently obviously having vega and 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 enzo is a little bit less defensively stable than um caicedo and lavia i would say that those two are much better at the counter press than these two are and whilst yes we do have kukurea who's a very good counter presser in his own right i think this defensive midfield is definitely weaker and it, it depends on whether enzo is playing high up if he wants to play high up in this box to box role or if he is deployed as a as a five as it were that could obviously change how we play but it's not just the different personnel for us it's the personnel for um for newcastle that i'm really concerned about here because the way that they play in this this cup um kind of back line is not the way that we saw them play against us it's very very different so instead of them playing this four at the back it almost turns into a three at the back where we get um lloyd kelly who's basically a, a left center back by trade he plays in this kind of left center back role we get fabian share playing in the central role we get Kraft, who is a not natural right back but can play at center back at times and he'll play in this right center back role and then tino livermento would get really really high and act as this kind of uh, right wing position and they kind of play with a three at the back obviously they did this against wimbledon which is a much weaker team than we are so maybe they won't do this and maybe they will they'll opt to have the extra defensive player here but for the most part they will pro i think that they will probably play this way and they get tino up really high and obviously the um the the left winger would probably kind of drop into this role and kind of play here 
and kind of act almost like a like a left wing back but obviously if Isak's playing here he'll play a bit higher I, I it basically depends on which wingers they're using if they are able to play Gordon obviously he's injured and he'll be um he'll be assessed before the game if he's able to play maybe he plays here maybe Harvey Barnes plays here because he can play in this kind of left wing back role maybe Jacob Murphy we don't know but they can definitely do that going back to Chelsea the obvious difference as well up top for us is the fact we have Mudrick Sancho and Nkunku and obviously Felix too I think he, he's in included in this as our front line and this is a much less athletic team i would suggest like they're not going to run in behind as much obviously mudrick will but nkunku sancho and felix are definitely not the types of players that will be pressing really hard they're not the types of players that love to make runs in behind that type of thing we'll see a more controlled um, team and i think a lot of this will be a much more possession based game than the kind of let's get the ball and quickly move it forward and be direct that we kind of saw against them the first time and maybe this will work if they're playing this this three at the back but if they are playing the same way with the the, the four at the back and then the three defensive midfielders obviously the field midfielders that i've kind of put in here longstaff willock and um and tonali they are not the most creative they're a little bit more i would say they're a little bit more creative than the three that they had they deployed at us uh, on sunday um but if they're playing with this kind of block of four and block of three and then even maybe a block of five if they bring the wingers back having this kind of close control possession is actually going to suit us a little bit more than the runners i would say if they like to be a bit more pragmatic we don't know if they will be obviously they love to press really high so we'll kind of see them play high up and if they are playing high up that suits us having runners in behind and obviously if they're playing in that way again and they have they kind of try and do the same thing that they did this might make us struggle because we don't have the runners like a, a pedro neto like a madaweke like a, a jackson who's going to run in and obviously We'll have to try and navigate that in our own way by kind of doing the same thing we've kind of seen Nkunku and Felix do, and that's that combination play and being able to make cheeky kind of one twos around the edge of the area. Now, I spoke about Isak playing on the left, posing an interesting dynamic because obviously he's naturally a central player and he can play um, in the center and obviously he's a very good runner, but he is very similar to Nicholas Jackson. And we've seen that Nicholas Jackson is an, another player that can kind of run into the left channel. And Isak is definitely a player that can do this. Obviously we've seen that wonder goal that he scored where he's gone all the way around the outside, got into this, this position and put it in from here. Like he will play as a winger and he can definitely do that off the left side and that's kind of what i expect them to do because of the player that will play in the center and that's william osula now from what i've watched of this kid and it's not that much i will admit he is a very very direct runner and he reminds me a lot of kind of what we saw from mark giu when we were watching him in preseason. he is very very willing to just completely run against the back line he'll he'll run every single time the ball gets to one of the midfielders and they can get their head up and play a direct pass he's going to be running the channels he's going to be trying to um put the defenders into a foot race he's a player that can offer something a bit different to what they had at, at the weekend where yes obviously isak can run in behind but he's going to be a player that likes to kind of link up with his teammates more whereas um Osler kind of wants to um be on the end of things in a way he's not going to drop deep and kind of link up with his teammates he's going to be he's going to say hey when the ball goes to bond one of the midfielders i'm going to make the run and give you the option and obviously that's not something we've kind of had we didn't have to deal with very much in the other game where now we've kind of got this 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 these three center backs as it were if he can get onto the back of tosin and obviously we've seen that he's been a bit shaky recently if he if he can make this run into this channel with buddy shield if he's occupied by another player that's going to be something he can create and obviously he's able to shoot across goal from here and even if he wants to kind of swap around with with isak because obviously isak can play central if these two kind of swap around and interchange then he's got this 1v1 against disassi who is definitely not the quickest and this could pose us a real threat if he's able to do this now obviously that's all hypothetical we don't know if they're going to play this way oh, that's just a kind of hunch that i i have i don't think they would completely rotate the, the the front line i think they would keep at least one senior player in this front line um and i think isak will be the one to do it despite him playing 90 minutes just because in my opinion he's the best in their front line so that's just a different kind of look at what we could see obviously i think that this game is going to be fairly different to what we um saw in the game on sunday but i do not think that the result will be much different and as i said this is just a brief overlook of what i was going to kind of show about this 
um, this game. I don't think there's much more to say that I didn't already say in the previous preview, so there we go. For a score prediction, I'm going to be predicting another win for Chelsea, as our strength in depth is much better than our opponents. I'm going to go for a 2-0 result, so slightly better than in the league, with Christopher Nkunku and Misha Mudrik getting the goals. We'll have to wait until the game to see if any of my predictions are correct, and as always, I'll be live streaming immediately after the game with Feeling Blue to review the match, so make sure you come through if you are able. But if you can't wait until then, YouTube reckons you'll enjoy one of these two videos on screen in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching as ever, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!